All right, we're now to the point where we have all the reaction forces solved, all the angles are solved, everything on the exterior of this truss is solved. So um, the outside forces are in static equilibrium. There's as much force pushing up as there is pushing down. There's as much force pushing uh, to the left as there is to the right. So this, this truss, all the outside forces are in static equilibrium. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to solve how much force is going to be on each member. Okay? And the first thing that you want to do uh, is create a free body diagram um, of your entire truss. So it's going to look something like this. Basically you're just getting rid of these middle parts and you're left with something that looks like this. Okay? It's the entire truss, but there's five uh, free body diagrams, one for each pin. And we're going to find out how the force is reacting on this, this member uh, from each location, okay? So we have this, and we're going to keep coming back to this, all right? This, this one right here, um, we're going to keep coming back to it and filling it out because as we update this, it will help us solve um, the next problems or the, the, help us solve the next member, all right? The first thing that you want to do is you want to take a look at your free body diagram and you want to, you want to look at where the least amount of unknowns are. And an unknown is just simply a member, okay? If we don't have any number in here, it's an unknown. So for, for uh, pin A, there's one, two unknowns, all right? For pin B, there are one, two, three, four unknowns. We don't know what this member is, this one, this one, or this one. At C, there's one, two. At D, there's one, two, three. We know what this guy is, okay? And at E, there's one, two, three, all right? Now you want to start with the least amount of unknowns, and we said that the least amount of unknowns were here. It's two, two, three, three, and four. Okay, so we're going to start at pin A. That's our going to, that's going to be the first one that we start at. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in just on this one right here and forget the rest of this. We're just focusing on just this guy right here. All right. So I'm going to set this guy aside, and again, we'll keep coming back to this guy a lot. All right. So here's pin A. This is just zoomed in on pin A. Now we have our reaction force uh, in the y direction, okay, which is up at 975, and I'm going to write this in here really quick. All right, up is positive, down is negative, to the right is positive, and to the left is negative. This is just like an xy coordinate, okay? So positive, 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 negative. I mean, you can go through and figure all that out on your own. All right. Now, when you get to this point, what is the first thing you want to do? The very first thing you want to do is break everything down so it's either going, uh, so it's going in um, X and Y. Okay, so this guy right here, this doesn't count. It's going in both X and Y. We want to break this down and so it's just to, 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 into two parts. One part going up and one part going to the right. And this is where it, come, it becomes important that you know how to break vectors down. Okay, so this vector right here can be broken up into a triangle that looks something like this, all right? So we have a 90 degree triangle right here. There's this and this, okay? So this and this together will create that. So we're just gonna ignore that this guy does, that this guy exists, okay? So we have this one here and this one here, all right? Now, the first thing you wanna always look at is uh, can you solve for one? Now remember our equations are right here. Can you solve for any one of, any one of these missing forces. Now this one combines this one and this one make up this one. So in order to find this, we have to know both of these. All right. So let's take a look at this. Well, we know that the sum of all the forces in the x direction must equal zero and the sum of all the forces in the y direction must equal zero. So let's take a look at this, the forces in the y direction, the forces going up and down. What ones do we have? Well, we have 975 going up. That's positive. 975, 975, all right. And then we have uh, this one here, the portion that's going up and down in the y direction. So I'm gonna call this, uh, this is uh, A, and this is connected I think to pin D, AD in the um, y direction, okay? I'm just gonna write it like that, all right? So what it's saying is if I add the sum, or when I add together, all the forces that are going in the y direction that are going up and down, it should equal zero. So I have 975, it's positive, 975. When I add to that, this guy right here, AD in the y direction, 
it should equal zero because there's no other forces that are going up and down. All right. Um, there's there's no other force, so we can solve for this guy right away. So it's just algebra. I subtract 975 from both sides minus 975. Oops, sorry, not there. Minus 975. And you find out that AD in the y direction equals negative 975. So it's going down. All right? Down at 975. Okay? So it's pushing up at 975. This is pushing down at 975. So that's the static equilibrium. That one's done. All right? Now, for this one here, we can do the same thing for the x direction, side to side. We have this one here, okay, this member here, which is pushing side to side, and then we also have this one up here. Remember, this guy is pushing to the side or to, to a side direction uh, with some degree, with, with some force, okay? This is unknown and this is unknown. We don't know it, but we can solve for this one because it's part of this triangle, okay? It's part of um, the vectors. I know that this is a 45 degree angle, here, okay, and this is a 90 degree angle here, all right, 90 degree angle there, and, and we can just use some of these simple uh, things to try and figure out what this is going to be, all right, so let's take a look at this, if this is theta, okay, going back to this, if this is theta, we want to know what the opposite is, and we have the adjacent, is, are there any one of these formulas that we can use that have opposite adjacent and theta. Well, we have opposite and adjacent and there's theta, so we're going to use tangent. Okay, and all we're going to do is just manipulate that equation. So the tangent of theta equals, and then it's going to be what? The opposite over the adjacent. So this, this guy right here is going to be um, AD, and this one's going to be in the x direction, divided by 975 equals the tangent of theta right? Well, how do we get this one by itself? How do we get this? We're going to multiply both sides by 975. That's going to cancel, so AD in the x direction will be by itself. So 975 times the tangent of theta, which is going to be 45, okay, is going to equal AD. So let's punch that through our calculator. So I'm going to turn on my calculator. I'll clear this out. All right. So I'm going to go 975 times the tangent, oh, not the inverse tangent, excuse me, the tangent of 45. And it says the answer is 975. All right, this is actually a 45, 45, 90 triangle, so both legs will be equal. But I wanted to show you mathematically how we find that. So this is going to be 975. Now, this is where you got to use a little logic. Which direction is it pointing? Is it going to the left or to the right? This is where you have to look at this guy. What is the sense of this if it's going down? Okay, if this is going down and to what direction? Down, all right, and to the left or to the right? Well, if it's going down, it has to be going down and to the left. So I know that this is going to the left. That's the sense of this vector, down and to the left, down to the left. Okay, just broken up into two parts. So I know that I have this vector going 975 this way. Now I can solve for this one, which is this is going to be A, and I think this is B over here. So this equation was the sum of all the forces in the y direction equals 0. Right here is going to be the sum of all the forces in the x direction equals 0. Well, what are all my forces? Well, I have a negative, because it's pointing to the left, a negative 975. Plus, because it's the sum, this missing one, A, B, okay, equals 0. Well, how do we get A, B by itself? We're going to add 975 to both sides. And you find out that A, B equals 975. These cancel out here, okay? And it's a positive 975. And which way is positive? It's to the right. 975, okay? Now, are we done? Not yet. We still have to figure out what this guy is, okay? We still need to find the hypotenuse. You can use any one of these, these equations here. Uh, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You could use the sine, cosine, or tangent because 
Well, you could use the sine or the cosine because we need to have hypotenuse in there someplace. All right, I'm just going to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared, okay? So, a squared, 975. This is one leg, one leg hypotenuse. a squared plus 975 squared, b squared equals, that's c squared. Well, how do you undo a square? You square root it. So I'm going to do secondary square root of the answer. I'm going to pull that answer back up. And I get 100 and, or 1,379 ish. So 1,300, and I'm just going to round it to 79 to be nice. Okay? Now we've solved for this vector. We've solved for this vector. Okay? And I'm going to draw this arrow in here so we know. And this, this 975 and this 975 is this vector broken down into xy. Now it's important to remember these because these are going to come up again. Okay? So we've solved this vector. It's, it's done. All the unknowns were solved for. All right? So um, we can now take this data and come back to this free body diagram. And we're going to update this free body diagram. This was 1379, and this was 975. 975, OK? So now. I've solved for this entire member here. What's important to remember, though, is the arrows. This guy was going down and to the left, OK? This is in compression. The arrows on the end of a member are either pointing at each other or away from each other. They're never pointing the same direction. So if this arrow is pointing down, I can't have this arrow, the other end of it, pointing down and to the left as well. It's in compression, so it's pointing away, all right? Or it's in tension, and they're pointing together. Okay? So if it's pointing away from the number, this end is pointing away from the number. So I'm just updating the free body diagram. All right? This one is pointing at the number, so this one has to be pointing at the number. Okay? That's how I always remember. They're either both pointing at each other, or they're both pointing at the number, or they're both pointing away from the number. If this one's pointing away from the number, this end has to be pointing away from the number as well. This one, this one's pointing at the number, this side has to be pointing at the number as well, okay? So now, this, so this side's completely solved. Well, how many unknowns do I have? I have, at point B, I have one, two, three. Remember, this one just got solved. I have one, two, three. I have two here, one, two. I have only two here now, one, two. But I have three over here, one, two, three, okay? So where do we want to go to next? I usually like to solve both the bases and get the bases out of the way. Again, you could go, you can go to wherever there are, there are the fewest number of unknowns, which there's two here and there's two here. This one just is simpler because we're not dealing with an, with an extra force. Okay, so let's go to C next.